TU members about uh, decoy collecting. It was like, oh my God, somebody finally wants to listen. Uh, this is really wonderful. And it's a, it is an honor to be here. I'm very excited, very passionate about decoys. The title of this presentation is The Other Season. It's simply for this reason. We all know what goes on in the Ducks Unlimited crowd from September through January. You know, we, we get to hunt ducks, we wait all year for that. Well, I call this The Other Season because really about January through the summer is the, is the decoy season. The decoy season is decoy shows, decoy auctions, and get-togethers, and it's just like what's going on at this hotel. Great, you know, here's a, Nell's right here in the front, attends decoy shows. It's the same camaraderie, it's the same passion, it's just extending the season so that you don't have that, that thing that ends in January. So, you know, I thought about what to talk about because of a very short time to talk about decoy collecting. And I think what's important mostly to know is decoys pre-market hunting and post-market hunting, collecting the early days and collecting today, advice and recommendation, and then how to begin. Um, everybody, maybe everybody's seen this picture. Decoys are, uh, have been around America for a very long time. They really are a unique American piece of, of our or folk art. Uh, these decoys were found in Love Lake Cave in Nevada. They're about a thousand AD. It was a rig of canvas backs. They're made with reeds. They were stained white, red, and black. They're in the Smithsonian and a few other museums now, but that's how long decoying dates back in the U.S. Um, back in the early market days, as people began to move from east to west, you know, hunting ducks went from hunting for survival to hunting for sport, and then really to hunting for profit. And these were the days, the good old market gunning days. And why did that happen? Well, everybody had to eat, and there wasn't a schnooks grocery store at the end of every block. So what happened is you, people did go to the market. They would, they would raise and kill things on their own, but they would go to the market, and the, what the market had was dependent upon what was going on in the country. Well, every fall and every spring, the great migrations would come through, so these guys were market gunners. This is probably the Chesapeake Bay. My point in showing you these photos is lots of decoys were made and lots of decoys were used, and there's still lots of decoys out there. So if you're going to collect, you want to sort of drill down to what you want and what's important. But some great old, you know, sink box shooting, which became illegal in the U.S. But these guys needed lots of decoys. They'd leave them out during the season. They'd go in and out of their boxes when the ducks were there and after the ducks were comfortable. And believe it or not, you know, they were getting $2 for a canvas back 100 years ago at market. I mean, it was, it was a, they could make a pretty good living. So not only were ducks hunted, pre-market days. There was also this thing called millinery trade happening. And people were eating, were eating shorebirds, but they were also gunning them for their millinery trade, which was ladies' hats, basically, you know, sold to Macy's. So here's a guy, probably, you know, somewhere in New England, Massachusetts, Long Island, setting out a gunning rig of shorebirds, which would have been around 1900. And uh, there's a great old photo of somebody shooting shorebirds. I don't know, they look large, I don't know that they're curlews, but they look greater yellow legs or willows or something. <coughs> so we had this pre-market thing going on. Then about 1918, everybody's heard of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. And the laws, conservation laws, really began to settle in about 1900 through a couple different phases of the Lacey Act. But in 1918, this federal law stopped market gunning. It's, it stopped the sale of ducks and duck parts. Uh, meaning wings and whatever. So you can no longer do this, so all those guys are out of business now, and all the people that used to make their decoys are out of business. So they really started to transition into the sportsman's period. And um, to, to show you an idea of what the sportsman's period was like, in 1917, and I, I bet nobody's seen any footage like this. This is absolutely fabulous. This is from the Snatchewine Duck Hunting Club in Putnam, Illinois, 1917. These guys were savvy enough to hire video cameras. <coughs> Looks like it's a spring day. I don't know what part of the season it was, but uh, I'll show you a little bit of this.
time. So, so you've got factory decoys, you've got hand carved decoys, and one of the, th this, this video showed up on uh, YouTube eight weeks ago, and it's amazing. It's, it's a guy named Joe Lincoln, which is one of the most famous decoy carvers in the, country, in the world now, Acord, Massachusetts. Somebody actually videotaped him making a decoy in 1920. To give you an idea of what's involved, and this is all hand tools, obviously. Here's Joe. Thank you. 